Hey guys, Lethal Leslie here, and today we're going to be talking about the best possible build for the PP1901. Now, I'm going to show you exactly what's on the weapon right here, because, you know, I want to make it as easy for you to build this weapon if you're trying to build it yourself. And, yeah, we're going to dismantle in a minute and rebuild it so you can see part by part, but I thought I'd just open this section up first so you can have a look exactly what's down here. You might know a lot of these parts already. It might make the build a lot easier for you to build. Obviously, some of these are abbreviations, so if you're trying to search them on the market, it don't really work so well because you need to open up each part individually to do that. Anyway, we're going to go and dismantle it now and put it back together. And the first thing we're going to add is going to be the foregrip. Now, we've gone for the RK3. This does plus 13 aeronomics, which is extremely good. And the gun itself, just for starters, comes in at around 11,000. And then the foregrip that we're going to use for the best possible build comes in at around 9 or 8.77 if you're getting it off the skier. So we'll chuck that on as the first item, and that puts us around 20k on the weapon so far. Now the next thing we're going to add here is just a little gadget that helps the weapon fold and gives you certain options for stocks like this stock right here which we'll jump onto in a second. This again is extremely cheap coming in at around 3 or 4k depending on who you're buying it off. So we'll chuck that on the weapon now and move on to the stock. Now the stock for me is one of the best on the whole game. It does minus 45 recoil as well as plus 10 aeronomics. A lot of the stocks do something similar but this one is definitely one that is right up there as one of the best. And that's probably why it comes in at around 20,000, 21,000 right now. And that is only if you're buying it off the skier. If you do not have the skier or the skier is out of stock, you will have to pay a lot more at 26,000 for this. But I think it's worthwhile. If you're trying to build the best possible weapon or the best possible recall for a gun, this is definitely going to be right up there as the best option, really. So we're going to chuck that on now, and that's the stock sorted. Next, I'm going to go for this RP1 here. Now, this is just a little item that you can chuck on a lot of weapons in the game. Not something I would say is essential, really, but if you want that plus one air go, you might as well take it. It's not exactly too expensive as well. If you fill it by item, you can see you can get one right now for about 2k. It's about 2.8 off the skier, so if you refresh, that's probably yeah, a more reasonable price at around 2.8. So it's really cheap anyway, and it just seems to slot on every single weapon I build these days. Next up, we're going to add these two pieces here. This comes with the gun as standard, so you should already have this with the weapon unless you've bought it completely dismantled. And even if that is the case, it's not too expensive. It comes in at around 4,000 to replace it. And then you're going to want to add the foregrip, and this is where you get all your attachments. You can add a scope on top of here if you wanted to, a tactical either side, and obviously your foregrip at the bottom. So we'll add these two together now and put them on the weapon. So obviously you can see the weapon's now functional. We're getting there. And next thing we're going to add is going to be the foregrip itself. Oh, we've actually forgot the um, dust cover. So we'll put the dust cover on first. And this does have a positive effect on the weapon as well. Plus five on the ergonomics, which is nice. And this is what's going to hold our scope. You do have an option to put it further forward. But personally, I would not be putting it further forward at all. So we'll chuck that on now. Oh, we're there. we'll check the price as well, because we are trying to check the price of stuff as we go. You can see this is almost worth nothing. Perfect. So we'll check that on the weapon, and then we'll go on to the foregrip. Now, this foregrip is all about ergonomics. It does have a positive effect on the recoil as well, which is fantastic, but it does plus 11 on the ergo. And the guns are relatively, well, not relatively, they're really accurate as it is, which is pretty sweet. So we're going to chuck this on the weapon, and the price of this is coming in at around 20000 22000 So it's not the cheapest, that's for sure, but it does have a positive effect on the weapon, a very positive effect. You can get dumbed-down versions of this exact foregrip as well, ones that'll do maybe 7 on ergo and 2 on recoil. So if you did want to go for something a lot cheaper, there are cheaper options for some of the parts on these weapons. We'll chuck that on anyway, and we'll move on next to the scope. Now, when it comes to a scope, I always say it's up to you. What do you want from your scope? Do you want something that's long distance? Do you want something that is, you know, extremely short distance? You've got the red dot, the PK, things like that. Or do you want something like a holographic? Again, it's short dif distance, but it's just whatever your preference is. But as for holographics, this is the best option when it comes to the holographic sights. And you can see it has a plus three accuracy, minus two ergo, which isn't bad for a sight like this. It looks like quite a heavy sight, so it doesn't really have too bad an effect on the ergo. But this isn't cheap either. You can get cheaper holographics around 10k. This one comes in at around 28k. Ignore these, someone are trying to sell 10 packs for some reason, and it's 28k there if you wanted to buy this. It is sold out right now with a mechanic for 27, so that's the base price for it. But yeah, it's, it's very 30k for the scope, I think, is quite an expensive scope or you know mid-range scope as it is 
So if you know if you were building multiple of these, it would cost you 30k a pop. You can get some that are around 10 to 15 if you did want to try and dumb down the gun and make it a little bit cheaper. But we'll chuck it on the weapon now and we'll move on next to the tactical laser. Something I've actually gone off myself. I know a lot of people do enjoy lasers. This is the blue one. It's 5k if you get it off the skier and it is 8k right now if you want to get it off a player. And yeah, that just slots on nicely onto one of the tactical slots. But you've got to be careful not to give yourself away with lasers. That's what's wrong with them. They're a pain in the butt. Hence the reason, personally, I've gone off them. I don't really use them anymore. Next up, we're going to go and add the suppressor. It's the Osprey 9. And this will slot straight on the weapon. Nothing else needed, which is kind of, kind of nice. Uh, it does minus 7 on the recoil, plus 2 on the accuracy, minus 9 on the ergonomics, and plus 0 0.5 on the muzzle velocity. So it has some good effects and bad effects on the weapon. The air goal, this the weapon's got so much air goal anyway that I wouldn't worry too much about the minus nine. And yeah, it's good for the recoil. It's another thing that's helping the recoil out a lot with the stock. So let's go ahead and fill up my item on this one. And it goes for 27k. So again, a very expensive item really. Not cheap at all. We'll chuck that on. And last but not least, we have the magazine here, which we're gonna unload because we don't we'll talk about the bullet in a second now. And this for me is the best magazine because it gives you really fast loading speed. It already has extremely fast, it's an SMG, they have extremely fast loading speed as it is. And then you go and add this to it and that just makes it much better again. So you've got an extremely fast weapon at loading which is nice to have in this game because SMGs are standard shoot extremely fast so you want to be able to get another clip in there as fast as possible. Before we put it in there we'll put the um, bullets down here and check them out as well. Oh, sorry, as for the clip, it goes for, what's it go for? Around 3.5 or 5k if you don't have the skier there. So that's really cheap as well. You can afford to buy them, no doubt about it. And now onto the bullets. They are expensive. 716, they go up to 750. I think they sit around 750 standard. And they're not the best. And what I mean they're not the best is measuring them against other bullets on the game. SMGs are fun guns to use, but these are definitely the best bullets when it comes to an SMG. Unfortunately, there are no bullets in an SMG that you are going to blow you away. That's the way it is. So you've got to accept that. And these are the ones you want to go for if you are building an SMG out as it is. So we'll chuck them in the weapon and we'll chuck the magazine on the weapon. And there you have it. This is the gun complete now for us. And as you can see, the recoil is 154 horizontally. Vertically, it's only 37. The ergonomics is up at 72, extremely high. And I think this is a really solid weapon. It's a fun weapon for moving, mobility. It's really good for taking out scarves, that's for sure. Or anyone without any armor on. But it will struggle a little bit more if you come into a geared player who's wearing some high-end armor. The bullets are going to struggle. In those cases, you can obviously aim for the face and the legs. Something I like to do when I'm using bullets like these. So just before we head out, I'm going to jump into hideout and we'll just shoot those 30 bullets we have right there. Just so you can see how it does perform shooting at a piece of metal downrange. So here we are, we've got the weapon out and you can see how fast it aims down sight because of the ergonomics being so good, which is pretty sick. And let's just go and have a shot. I'm going to do these shots actually uncontrolled, so I'm not going to touch the recoil whatsoever. So we'll go for the furthest guy away, we'll shoot him in his chest and we'll just see what happens with the recoil of the weapon in general and see where the shots land. And I was not on fully auto, so that's obviously going to be an issue. Let's try it again, we've got 29 bullets now. Oh, yeah, I left one bullet in there. Not bad at all for the recoil when you look at it. It recalled straight up onto the guy's head for two or three bullets, then into his shoulder. That's what I like about a lot of guns in this game. If you are careful where you shoot your first bullet and just let the gun fly, you can land a lot of shots and kill someone extremely fast, even with headshots. We go out and back in again, and we'll have another go on this guy who's a little bit closer. We'll do hip fire, and we'll aim for about the throat area and just let the gun fly and see how it performs up close. And again, we forgot to put it on fully auto. You love to see that. And yeah, that'll do it right there. So you can see there, we didn't do no recoil control. The first bullet was this one here, and then the second one was in the chest. It recalled over the head for most of the bullets, so you will need to control it a little bit with recoil. And then it did manage to come down towards the face. We got one clean on the face. So we got a few on the chest and the shoulder. The chest and the shoulder? Um, the neck and the shoulder is what I meant there. So that's the kind of uh, recoil you can expect from the weapon. I think it did quite well. If you were tr to control it a little bit more, you could get much better shots, obviously. 
because we're all going to control our recall when we're in game to a certain extent, aren't we? That's the oh again, I forgot to change it over, and we'll uh, go again. There we go. And if you control your recall, you can see you can land almost every single shot in and around the chest if you wanted to, lot in the head and all that kind of good stuff. And that's basically it, guys. That's the P19. Hopefully the video helps you in some way. Hopefully you enjoy the weapon. I think it's a fun little weapon to make. It does come in around, what, 120 to 150 somewhere in that price range. It may be closer to about 120 really. So it's not really too expensive to make, but also it is going to struggle in certain situations, and in other situations it's going to handle it like a trooper. I'm going to leave this one there anyway. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, as always, and take it easy.